Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about how to render your sequence and the render settings that you have in Replicant. So we have here our sequence. As you can see, there are two cameras and our character is animated. And now you want to render this. Uh, the first thing you need to do is go to the render icon in the timeline and this panel will show up. The first thing you will see is the title of your file and the folder direction. You can click here in the three dots to browse the location you want to save this in. And then you will see three options. One is a snapshot. This will render a frame or a screenshot of the start of your timeline. A screenshot current will make a render of your viewport as you have it in the moment and the render will create a video with the following settings. So let's talk about the settings for the render. You have the start time and end time. This will basically tell a replicant how long your sequence will be. If this is disabled, it will use by default the in and out points of replicant that you can crop here or expand as you wish or you can type the proper and specific uh, points in time that you want the ins and out to be if not you can establish here if you only want to render from second 10 to second 11 for example it will only render this second. Then you have the frame rate. You can choose from different presets, the resolution as well. You have different, the most common uh, resolutions. The quality, this is the graphical settings that the render will use. You can use current settings if you have very specific graphical settings in the preference graphical uh, panel, graphics panel. One thing to keep in mind is uh, the render will use the DLSS method uh, established here. So for renders, we recommend using quality or DLAA, which is going to give the best quality and reduce the glitches. Then you have vertical resolution. This allows to switch the resolution from vertical to horizontal, so you can render a vertical output. Uh, you can force the aspect ratio. This will use the aspect ratio of the camera if it doesn't match perfectly uh, the aspect ratio of the resolution. Or you can use custom settings. For example, if you want a very specific frame rate or resolution, you can type whatever resolution you want and also invert it with this icon. Uh, so that's if you need something uh, custom. Then we have the export format. Uh, you can choose from a different set of options. You will have MXF lossless, which will provide the best quality um, for the video. Then you have the MP4, which is a very common format. And you can export it as a sequence of images, uh, either GPA or PNG. You can include or exclude audio. Override the files. Uh, this will make sure every time you render a new one, uh, it will override the previous uh, the previous file. So keep an eye on this. Delete source file. This will delete all the images create while uh, making the render. So in general, it's uh, nice to have this enabled so you don't get uh, hundreds of frames. Uh, you can choose uh, establish compression. Uh, this t temp tier is where you want your temporary image while replicant renders to be a store. It's going to be only temporary files. Mm. So in Explorer, uh, basically when you finish your render, it will uh, automatically open that Windows browser. 
with the directory of the of the render and you have some advanced settings if you're familiar with how Unreal uh, Engine render settings work you can override the anti-aliasing method and choose a different one that fits your needs you have spatial and temporal samples uh, that you can use to improve the quality of the render Uh, the path tracing right now is uh, experimental, it's not properly implemented, so uh, be careful using it, uh, it might be problematic to use it. Then you have the render warm-up frames. Uh, what this does is prepare the engine to render the first frame uh, before start the proper rendering so for example if you have the higher dynamics or a very strong animation or lighting in the f happening in the first frame you want to have these settings enabled so you allow the the engine to calculate all of those things before I start rendering uh, if you don't have those it can create uh, glitches at the start of your render so the first frames will be unusable so it's uh, very useful to have those things and then you have the render passes uh, if you want to do some compositing so let's render our clip let's call it uh, test render and it's gonna be here so we want to render the entire sequence and you will see we click render and right now it's doing the warm-up uh, frames, so you can see it's calculating the light, it's not started yet. Now it's a start, you can see here the progress. And, and at any time you can abort it. It might freeze for a little bit, uh, depending on the complexity of the render, it might take a bit, but here we are. The render has been aborted and we are back so that's basically it for all the render settings i hope you find them useful and see you in the next video bye